What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Ruta the Null here, coming back at you with some more Python code, and we're still on the End Curses bandwagon. But that's okay. That's okay, because you know, the End Curses bandwagon is really, really comfortable. I mean, there's nice hay for us to sleep and rest on. There's some pretty good looking girls here, and they're covered in snakes, because this is Python. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Alright, whatever. In the last video, we jumped into end curses. We finally got to creating our own screen, set up uh, all this information, and not so much information, but we got to display Hello World, and that's exciting. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna get up started with this code though in this tutorial, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this program. Uh, really keep it kind of easy. I'll go in order here. Curse dot o two. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and all right, we're gonna want to initialize the screen first thing. Remember, this has to be in a specific order, so standard screen equals init screen, parentheses, no semicolon. Alright, then we end the screen, end the window, end win. Alright, that's set up the way that we want it to be. And let's go ahead and add our string, hello world, and we'll wait for user input just so the screen doesn't just jump away from us. Now, if I run this program, remember, Python curse 02. Hello world, that one's perfectly fine. Okay. Now, I want to introduce to you guys this function called move. And move is really simple and easy because all it does is move the current cursor position in a window. Now, Ncurse is made, is made up of different windows, and they can all be kind of separated, and they're kind of like objects that are displayed on the screen or inside the shell, and the standard screen is the utmost window. It's the topmost or the bottommost layer. Like I was said in the, in the last video, it's however you really want to think about it, but it's the window with the most authority. And it's also the default. It's the fallback for most functions. So that's why add string is adding to, by default, the standard screen. And the move function is going to move the cursor for the standard screen. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's move, M-O-V-E, pretty simple, pretty easy. But this takes two parameters and they're integers, right? It's, it's the coordinates, it's the position on the grid inside of our shell, and that's easy to understand, right? So you'd think you just type in your X and your Y value and boom, you're done. Wrong. No. <laughs> and curses is a little weird. It's, it's a little strange. It, it actually reverses X and Y and takes the Y coordinate first and then the X coordinate. Now, if we're looking at this inside of our shell, remember, the shell is kind of divided into lines and columns. Now, the columns are is each vertical row, obviously, and the lines is the X value, or the number of um, certain characters you can have in a line. Like, if I'm down here at my prompt, L, 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 each L is taking up a different spot in a column, but it's all one line. So that's the way we can organize that in our mind, but when we're setting this up in, in curses, we have to keep in mind that the column comes first, and then the line, or at least the position in the line. All right, so let's try this. Let's move to zero zero, which is where it is, is where it's at right now. Let's run this anyway, and you see there isn't any change because we're still at the current position that we were at initially. So now, if I change this to let's say five, if you were thinking with your x and y mindset, you would think that it would be moved five spaces over to the right, correct? Well, you can see that it's being moved down five. See, there's one row here, two, three, four, five, and there's the new cursor position right up there. Okay, now we can even move this in the X position way. Uh, whatever I just said, I don't even know. Let's say 30. If I run this, Hello World is all the way over here now. It's moved 30 spaces in the x-axis, or on a line. And that's kind of difficult and a, and a strange way to think about it, but all you really have to keep in mind is that rather than moving x and y-wise, you're moving y and x-wise. Okay, that's really all that I kind of need to introduce and show you guys in this video. There's the move function. It allows you to do that by the cursor at one position, but in all honesty, you're probably not ever really going to use this because you're not so much going to be manipulating the cursor as you are other windows inside your Ncurses program. Okay, 
before we close out of this 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 function, not so much this function, but this tutorial, taking it into an even bigger scope, <laughs> I want to introduce you guys the move add string function. All this really is is the add string function with MV preceding it. And all you're doing is you're moving before you actually add a string. So you're essentially doing move as you would before an add string function, blah, blah, blah. But instead, you're just doing it all in one function. It's all one call. So we can do this like we did before, 0, 0. And if I had the terminal open, ran my curses program, same sort of thing set up here. I can move it down to 5. Same sort of setup here. And I can move it into 30. Same sort of setup here. So all the same information, just a different way of sort of procedurally ordering it inside your mind and inside your code. Okay, next I want to kind of do something a little bit silly, but it'll it'll kind of get one idea across later on in the series. So what I'm going to do is set up a for loop. Now, this is going to be weird because it's going to make a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to say for i in range, uh, let's start at 0 and let's go up to 50. How about that? So we're counting, remember, i is going to be our, our incrementer variable. And what I'm going to do is move add string. We'll add our hello world line. And let's move to, let's say, we're going to be 10 pixels down, and we're currently going to be moving at the i position for the x coordinate. And now let's get character. Now, get character by default will block. And when I say block, it will stop all the execution of the following code and until and it will wait until the user actually presses a key because that's what the get character function does. We can sort of reroute this and make it so that it doesn't act like this later on in the series because there's a function that allows us to do that, but for now, this is a good way to understand this example because it's going to wait for us to press a key and therefore it's going to wait for us to uh, increment or continue through the loop. But all right, let's just run this code. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it is that we're looking at here. If I, run, if I run this, you can see hello world is down there, 10 pixels, 10 coordinates, 10 positions on the grid, and if I hit H, or any key, even enter, anything, if I hit it, hello world moves over one position. And it moves over again and again and again and again and again. But wait a second, you can still see these H's being pushed out here, right? Well, isn't that strange? I mean, I thought we kind of would expect it to, the hello world would just move along that line, right? Well, not so much. Keep in mind that we're just adding it to the screen. Add string is literally adding that string there. And then every time we put it again on the screen, except at a different coordinate, it's going to overwrite what's already there and keep the things that it isn't touching. So when we hit enter, the previous H that we were just at is not being manipulated because we're only increasing from the current position onward. So that H right there is going to be untouched, but it will stay there in our output and it'll make a pretty lengthy and disgusting mess. But, later on in the tutorial series, we're going to be able to move Hello World all by itself, and not have to worry about what is under it, or what is sort of behind it, in a sense. Keep that in the back of your mind. Just, just keep thinking about it. Because NCurses is going to allow you to see what's behind a character, Essentially, if we place characters or we output on top of something in a window or on the screen, and it's not going to allow you to do that um, otherwise. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I've gone a little too far here in this tutorial, but hey, I, I like to get you guys thinking, and I wanted to introduce to you guys the move function or the move, the entirety of the move concept of moving uh, your cursor on the screen. Okay, <laughs> thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will talk to you in the next tutorial.